friend Chris Morris. Uh, if you can't see me, uh, Chris is a, a, a dear brother who's been with us for uh, about a year or so, and um, it's been such a joy for myself to get to know him. But really, here's Robin Haller, uh, uh, Chris's uncle, and uh, Robin has been a, a huge part of Chris's walk with the Lord since he's been saved and has been instrumental in, in uh, Chris growing up this last year in the Lord, and, and so we're, we're both going to dunk uh, Chris. <laughs> Actually, I need the help, really. <laughs> so, great. And, uh, Chris, if you would just share with us how God is working in your life, then uh, we got that. It's great. Right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for bearing with me as I attempt to read and talk at the same time. Uh, my name is Chris. My family's sitting right over there, my aunt, and my grandparents, my cousins. Um, I've been walking with the Lord since the beginning of December of last year, so 2019. Um, and what a joy it is to be here with you all as I share about the tender mercies and grace that God has shown in my life. And declare to you all that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is my Lord and my Savior. My life before being saved could be defined as a constant struggle. I grew up in a godless home and accepted the sparse infusion of God in our lives when my family visited. Or when I got to see my dad, there was no talk of God. Uh, he was never brought up. It was only tarot cards and weird New Year's dances to try and get money to come into the house. Uh, from the time I was very young, I had a feeling that things were broken. I just assumed it was myself. In a home filled with stress, fear, and godlessness, I didn't know any better. This feeling of brokenness would be the center of my struggle for 28 more years of life. I skipped forward a few years and I was living with my dad, going to a seeker-friendly church and spending my whole life there. I worked there, volunteered there, went to youth group there. I loved it. I eventually made the choice that I would slip my hand up for Jesus. I thought to myself, yeah, I'll take a little of that. Uh, live my life and then go to heaven, why not? So I got baptized and everything changed, except it didn't. I was professing the name of Christ to everyone and living like the devil at the same time. I thought I could have Christ in one hand and the darkness that I loved in the other. After seeing a few things in the Marines, I altogether turned away from God. I thought if God loves everyone like I was taught, where is he in all this? The problem wasn't with God, it was with me. I was never saved to begin with. See, Jesus tells us that no one can come to him unless the Father who sent him draws them. And that calling is irresistible. From my time in the military until the time I was saved, I chased that feeling of brokenness and tried everything I could to fix it. Drinking and drugging made the feeling go away until it didn't. Work never made it go away. No matter how many awards I achieved or how much money I made, relationships never worked, stuff never worked. No matter what I did, it was never enough. And it, it could have never been enough. Oh, that I would have cracked open Ecclesiastes years ago. Blasphemer, idolater, adulterer, liar, coveter, dishonoring to my parents, and never did I even acknowledge God, let alone love him for even a second. Even when I thought I was saved, it was on my own terms. To make it all worse, I actively campaigned against the church after I realized everything I had been taught by my old church couldn't have been true. I made it a goal of mine to engage with professing believers and convince them they were wrong. I came out this way, here, from Colorado in November last year, and some of you out there probably met me before I was saved. John 1, 5 says, And a light shone in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now in context, John here is speaking of Christ coming into the world, but it's also true that as believers on Christ, his light causes us to shine in the darkness also. And this is what I experienced when I first moved out here. My family and this church had the light of Christ in them, and I was the darkness. I couldn't stand being around for too long. I didn't enjoy coming to church. I just thought, well, I'll fake it till I make it, but eventually I just left. After Thanksgiving, I went to see my mom in San Diego and had no intention of ever coming back and every intention of getting drunk again and deciding what I would do with my life now. Long story short, that ended up in a disaster. I drove back up this way, utterly lost on who I even was anymore. When I arrived, I had to fill my family in on everything that had happened. And it was during this that my aunt said to me, God knows. The rest of that day I spent reflecting on my life and those two little words. Before bed I felt compelled to do something I had never done in my entire life. I got on my knees and cried to the Lord that he would have mercy on my soul. 
I suddenly felt the overwhelming weight of guilt in the presence of the Almighty God. I was broken. I prayed that he would take over, that I couldn't do life without him anymore, that it was his will or nothing. And almost as soon as the words left my mouth, I was filled with an overwhelming comfort as I prayed for direction. Lord, what do I do? I had met my Savior. I had met Jesus Christ. The next morning, my uncle picked me up and took me to breakfast. And the first question he asked was, how are you doing spiritually? <laughs> what could I do but tell him what had happened? I asked him what to do and he laid out the path for me. Get in the word, proclaim what had happened, and let's get you in touch with Corey. <laughs> See, it's impossible to come into contact with Jesus and not change. What an amazing and wonderful work. What a display of power and grace. My life has completely changed since God saved me. Where before I hadn't read a book since the Marines, now I fill my time reading God's holy word. Where before my life was a constant struggle, now there is patience, joy, and obedience in the Lord. Where before I couldn't stand church, now I can't stand to be away from church. Where before I was content in being alone, now I love being around God's people. Where before I stood a sinner, convinced I was good by worldly standards and condemned before God, now I stand a sinner, knowing that Christ alone has saved me. And because of his work, I stand justified before God. God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Where before I had faith that I could be the captain of my own ship, now I know that my only hope is in Christ. There is only one God, and there's only one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ, who calls all men to repentance, died on Calvary and was risen on the third day, and that this Jesus, the Son of God, who is truly God and fully man, is my Lord and Savior. It is my desire to be baptized in accordance with his command, that believers be baptized in a symbolic death, and being submerged into the water, and being risen again with him, dead to the flesh and alive in his spirit. Amen. Amen. I need to figure out if I fit. <laughs> yes. It has been encouraging to see you um, submit your life to Christ and be humble uh, and walk in Him and uh, seek out uh, His face, read His Word, mature in Him. Obviously, he has brought you to this place. God is so great. And, uh, it's manifested in Christ's life. Uh, I mean, in Chris's life. <clears throat> Christ in Chris's life. And it's been a beautiful thing to watch. And I uh, thank you for... Uh, thank you all for being here witnessing that. First of all, Chris, thank you for being uh, Chris, is Christ Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. You're the only Savior of the world? Yes. Well, brother, it's a joy, and uh, based on not only that confession of saving faith in Christ, but the evidence of God's work in your life, it's a joy for us to baptize you. So I'm going I'm to grab your hand here. And, uh, and, uh, you can hold on too, Robin, if you don't mind. <laughs> I know you're a nose plugger, but you can do that if you'd like. We're going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.